You know, having a studio, Octave Records, one of the better studios around for, for what we do, which is high resolution, great sound from, and, and you know, there are great recording studios around, but they don't use the same definition recording materials uh, and, and systems that we do. Um, and so this is a very special studio. And one of the cool things about this is some of the toys we have. And, and I know a lot of, there are studios with many more toys than we, but here we are at Octave Studios and we have this Hammond B3 organ. Completely mechanical sounds. All those sounds on a B3 organ, or a C3, this happens to be, um, are all mechanically generated and then played through this ancient system with a Leslie. And Anyway, it's cool. All right. We're not here to talk about that. Uh, Nangba in New Jersey writes to me and he says, Paul, thank you for the amazing nuggets of wisdom. Ooh, I like that. Dropping nuggets. <laughs> doesn't sound good or healthy. On the topic of YouTube, I have noticed that reviewers of audio equipment broadly fall into two camps, measurement focused versus listening focused. Yep. While I am personally more in the listening camp, I reckon that measurements matter as well. However, I'm not sure how much to read into measurements. Specifically, when it comes to electronics, some reviewers make a big deal about noise levels dropping from 120 dB to 100 dB. My question is, does that really matter? Is there a performance level beyond which I should stop caring about measurements? Yes, and you just hit it. 100 dB, anything greater than 100 dB is just, I mean, it's nice, but you would never hear the difference. So that's like saying, oh gosh, you know, my car goes from zero to 60 in two seconds and this car, this that I want, goes in 1.8 seconds. Uh -huh. Well, <laughs> both are extraordinary. The difference between 1.8 and 2 seconds is rather meaningless, I would think. And certainly when it comes to decibels of sound, if you have a signal noise ratio of 100 dB or anywhere near 100 dB, you're in noise free heaven, right? 120 dB, it's quieter, but are you going to hear the difference? No. And with respect to dynamic range, same thing. So yeah, there is a theoretical point where you just get into diminishing returns. It's great. Our new preamplifier has a noise floor that's like minus 140 dB. The PMG signature preamplifier minus 140 dB, and that is impressive. From a listener's standpoint, is it more impressive than the PMG preamp having 105 dB, 100 dB? It's impressive, but meaningful? No. Much of the meaning, and this is where I get on my soapbox, or I get on my C3 organ <laughs> box, and I rant a little bit, comes down to this. How did we get there? What mechanisms did we use to achieve that? If those mechanisms concurrently help the sonics, then win-win, okay? But many of them don't. There are numerous examples of ultra low distortion, ultra low noise products that sound like dog meat. Why? Because they used ultra amounts of negative feedback to get there. And that's never good sonically. So you got to listen. You got to have a little bit of understanding of how these measurements work. But all of that really, really is important. And it's important because how you got there and where you get is at the end of the day, all that really matters sonically. So, hope that helps. Thanks and good luck. Bye.